everybody, my name is Jeremy Siskin. I'm the author of books like Jazz Piano Fundamentals Book 1, Jazz Piano Fundamentals Book 2, and the beautiful new second edition of Playing Solo Jazz Piano. Now, I'm trying to answer some mailbag questions, popular questions, common questions about learning jazz. And this one is one that is uh, asked quite a lot, which is, should I learn licks? This is controversial in the jazz community. It's controversial because we don't want to listen to improvisers who are just playing licks that they memorized. So it makes a lot of sense that you wouldn't teach people licks because you don't want them to play them. However, my answer to the question, should I learn licks, is yes, absolutely. And I want, to under, I want to explain how I got there so that you can understand what the purpose is for learning licks. So I think it's useful to think of jazz, uh, learning jazz, like learning a language. I'm not, I'm sure, the first to say that or think about it. But one of the things that we do when we're learning a language is we memorize set phrases. And sometimes you might do this consciously, um, but sometimes it's unconscious that good language learning, they'll give you the same sentence over and over so that, for instance, you know, you get donde esta la biblioteca, just stuck in your head. Uh, I think I'm missing accents there, but I hope my Spanish speakers, I think it's here and there, will uh, forgive me. <laughs> so donde esta la biblioteca. Um, now, just like we don't want to hear people play a bunch of licks on stage. If we're reading great Spanish poetry, <laughs> if we're reading great Spanish novel, we wouldn't expect to probably see Donde esta la biblioteca in there, right? If you don't speak Spanish, it means where is the library? But for somebody who's in that language learning stage, it's really useful to ingrain this into your head because you start memorizing Okay, um, you know, it's La Biblioteca, it's a feminine noun. And, I, oh, I always need to include that article with that, you know, object. And Donde Esta, I'm going to remember that. That means where is. Okay, so if I can say Donde Esta La Biblioteca, I can say Donde Esta La Piscina, where is the pool? Donde Esta La Playa, where is the beach? Donde Esta La Casa, where is the house, right? So I'm starting to pick up these building blocks of language, which are uh, very valuable in addition to just learning single words. So um, what we want to do is start you know, putting these into some sort of a neural network, a neural web together so that we can spit out all kinds of possibilities. In my opinion, Learning licks is doing something very similar. Um, if I learn, you know, this little lick, it's teaching me something like Donde esta la biblioteca, right? Uh, so it's doing all kinds of great things for me. So, first of all, it's training my ear. And I'm hearing, for instance, the beauty of that ninth against the minor seventh chord. And then these altered tones. It's also just like getting me into a nice rhythm so that I can hear and feel the two, five, one. It's also training muscle memory, you know, from that same hand position. I can go. I can make my own thing. teaching me about shape. Where does it go up and down? Where does it change direction? Um, it's teaching me about crossing over. So even though I might not ever just say Donde esta la biblioteca, I'm still learning so much by doing that. Um, okay, so now, I want to transition and take the other side of the argument a little bit, which is that I see a lot of students focusing way too much on licks, okay? So just as though, just as like, you don't want to spend all day walking around just simply saying Donde esta la biblioteca, I think it's really important if you're going to be 
a real improvising musician, which means, you know, creating things on the spot that you don't simply stop at licks, that you spend a lot of time actually improvising at taking those licks and putting them in new unexpected places, asking what if questions um, with your licks. What if I changed the rhythm? What if I added a triplet? What if I started going down and started instead of going up? And put them in context. Even if you're not gonna use them, you need to know how they're gonna fit in to tunes. Um, so don't use this fact of, oh, I need to know my, my licks um, as any kind of an excuse. I would say that licks should be at most a sixth of your practice. You know, if you have an hour to practice, maybe 10 minutes on licks. If not, I would suggest that you're probably using them as a crutch. Now, I want to move from this meta this language metaphor to a different metaphor where it's just it's hard to talk about things directly. Sometimes the best way to do it is indirectly. Um, and I don't really know much about this, but the metaphor I want to use is scaffolding. So right, if I want to build a building, again, not a construction uh, expert at all, but my understanding is that as you're building the building, you kind of have to build a little scaffolding off to the side, right? And let's, I don't know, we're gonna have a guy here, he's gonna be installing the windows <laughs> and the doors, and I don't know how buildings work. Um, to me, these licks are kind of are kind of like this scaffolding. As we build the building up higher, we have to build the scaffolding higher. But what we want to do eventually, you know, once that building is built, we will tear the scaffolding down. Okay, so it's strange to practice something to dedicate as much as one sixth to your practice, um, your practice time in order to not use it. And yet that is mostly what we want to do with licks. Nobody's going to be upset or nobody's really going to know if you play a lick in a performance. Um, for those of you who are, for instance, Oscar Peterson fans, he plays a lot of the same licks a lot of the time. There's so much joy, rhythm, exuberance to the music. I don't think negatively of it. But I do know some colleagues who do, who would say, you know, if we're comparing Oscar Peterson and Keith Jarrett, you rarely hear Keith Jarrett play the same thing again and again. I'm not passing judgment. I happen to love both of them for very different reasons. Um, but most purist jazz educators would say, let's tear down that scaffolding. We need that scaffolding to build something up, but afterwards, let's really tear it down. Now, transitioning back to our language metaphor. I know this is a little bit zany, but stick with me here. You know, if we are learning a language using traditional tools, grammar, vocabulary, etc. The great jazz improvisers are poets of the language, okay? So what do we expect poets to do? We expect them to play with language, to surprise us with their use of language, to use words in new unexpected ways, maybe to invent new words, to mix up the grammar, um, to do all these exciting things that reinvigorate language and make us hear it in a new way. And as I'm saying that, I'm thinking, you know, that is what Thelonious Monk does, 100%. That is what Miles Davis does, 100%. That's what a Keith Jarrett or a Brad Meldo or a Hank Jones or a Barry Harris or a Charlie Parker or a Bud Powell, et cetera, et cetera, does, right? They take the language of jazz and they don't only speak it, they reinvent it, they reinvigorate it. Now, can you be a great poet without having a really good mastery of that language first? Probably not, right? So, you know, it's just, this is all just to say that there's multiple steps to learning, that you're probably not gonna be able to fast forward <laughs> to your Thelonious Monk stage where you're doing surprising things all the time without really mastering that language first. In other words, you have to build up that scaffolding before you're able to have this really incredible skyscraper. So. Again, for that reason, my answer to the question of should I learn licks is yes. And I would learn licks with that clear-eyed you know, intention of as you work towards an artist, poet level, you are going to use those licks, yes and yes, yes and yes, less and less, but be informed by them, 
more and more. So that's my answer, uh, the definitive answer finally to this question. Um, thank you so much for uh, watching. Uh, comment cantaloupe if you can spell it uh, if you've made it this far. Thanks everyone.